Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Um, I'm gonna do something a little bit different than what I normally do here today because I wanted to talk about um, this stuff, which is called Cascatelli. Um, it's a brand new pasta shape, which is a thing that apparently happens. Um, I don't know if I've ever heard of a brand new pasta shape, but it's um, it was created by my old friend uh, Dan Pashman, who runs um, the, uh, the podcast The Sporkful which is sort of one of the original food podcasts. Um, you know, he's won a James Beard Award. He's a uh, great, smart guy. Um, and uh, he spent the last three years uh, developing this brand new pasta shape, which he's calling Cascatelli. Um, and uh, in full disclosure, like he's a friend of mine um, and I actually um, got to try this shape um, several months ago when it was sort of in its final final steps. I think it was the final, I think it was actually exactly the same as what, as, as what these boxes are now. Maybe it was a little bit thinner um, but, um, yeah, we got it. My, my daughter wanted to call them Brontosaurus necks, um, because they kind of look like Brontosaurus necks, but, um, he went with Cascatelli, which is uh, Italian for waterfall, which kind of makes sense, you know? So the shape, um, it's made by Folini, which is a, um, an American, um, artisan pasta company. It's an extruded pasta, so it's not a fresh pasta, it's an extruded pasta, it's pushed out of bronze dyes, um, that, uh, um, you know, so it's, it's dry pasta, like your bucatini or your spaghetti or something like that. Um, the way it works, so I would say that it's most similar to, um, they're excellent, by the way, amazing. Um, they're most similar to, I would say it's sort of like a cross between a, um, a radiatore and a, um, and a uh, cresto de gallo. So like a radiatore is like the one that's shaped like a radiator. It's got like little ridges all along. And then cresto de gallo is like a, a kind of, um, curved uh, macaroni, you know, like a macaroni elbow with a little ruffle on the top. Um, but he says it's sort of like a half bucatini um, with a bit of um, mafalde, so the ribbon pasta mixed in. Either way, it's got this kind of like trough, sauce trough, and these ruffles on it. Um, the goal when he was designing this was a few things. One of them was um, sauce ability, the ability to retain sauce. So actually I, I cooked some and we had this for dinner today. Um, we've had it a few times now since it came out. Very difficult to get right now because they're all sold out. Um, so this is what it looks like after it's been cooked. Well, this is what it looks like after it's been cooked and sitting around while you put your daughter to bed and reheated two hours later. Um, but as you can see, it like kind of gets this sauce trough. It's almost like a water slide for sauce. Um, so it retains sauce really well. Um, it Because it's got these sort of ruffles and these thicker parts and thinner parts it has this really nice texture there's a lot of um textural contrast there, there's some special word for that that dan knows um that he uses but it uh each bite kind of has a lot of different textual contrast it's also really easy to pick up so this stuff i would use it with um any kind of like sort of hearty sauce like a marinara or a um a bolognese even a pesto would work well here you know something you know what it does it's almost as if um it almost tastes like a self-stuffing pasta. So it's almost like a ravioli that stuffs itself because the sauce kind of works its way into that ridge and then stays there until you bite it and then it comes out. Um, so it's like it's like you get the effect of a stuffed pasta um, without having to do the stuffing. Um, anyhow, that's my review of this stuff. Um, I think it's really great. Um, I think it's really cool that he actually went through with this thing that he said he was going to do. Um, I had a lot of respect for Dan for, for going through it because it's not apparently not a very easy process. Um, you know, whatever pasta shape you can, you think, you can think of, um, it has probably been done before. Um, so really cool that he was able to come up with something that's both original and actually really good. Um, you know, on top of that, he had a lot of, uh, you know, there, there's a bunch of stories written about this. So there's a Planet Money um, episode about this. Um, various news stations have covered the story. Um, and then, of course, Dan himself has a five-part miniseries um, on The Sporkful called Mission Impossible, where he talks about developing this. Um, you know, one of the other difficulties was finding the people to make it because the big companies don't want to um, take the risk on a brand new pasta shape, especially, you know, with a, um, you know, Dan, who is, uh, you know, well-known in food circles and well-known in, in, in blogging circles, but it's not like he's a... Uh, you know, he's not like a world famous Italian chef. Um, so these um, big pasta companies don't want to mess around. Um, and the small companies are all too small. So he had to find a company um, that would be able to produce it in bulk at a reasonable price um, and would be willing to work with him. And so as Fellini did, so props to them for doing that. Um, I just think it's such a cool story and a very cool pasta shape. So um, yeah, that's it. Am I missing anything else? Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. Um, you know, generally with pasta, I it, it's people do often ask me, and and I know this gets asked a lot, like how do you pair pasta shapes with sauces? Um, and you know, part of it, it just comes down to tradition and like what pasta shapes developed near what ingredients and near what food cultures. Um, but the, the sort of general rule of thumb that I like to think of is like if I'm cleaning up, if imagine I spilled that sauce um, on the floor and I want to clean it up, like. Would I use a mop? If I would use a mop, then I would probably want something like um, like spaghetti or bucatini. If I would use a rag, then I would want something thicker and wider, like pepperdelle or um, or, or tagliatelle. Um, or if I would use like a sponge, then I would want something uh, like this. So something nice and thick and chunky, I would kind of use a sponge to scoop it up. Um, that's when I would go for this kind of pasta. This is just my sort of very general rule of thumb based on nothing other than my own personal preference. But anyhow, there we go. Cascatelli, um, brand new pasta shape. Really cool, really good, and uh, yeah, go check it out on, um, I'll leave a link down below to where you can order it if it's not sold out, which it probably is, but there's a wait list and you can get it in one pound and five pound boxes delivered to you, um, and definitely check out Dan's podcast, uh, The Sporkful, it's, it's great. All right, everyone, guys, gals, non-binary pals, thank you for joining me, bye-bye.